Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Bob with eSilencers.com, your top source for silencers online. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to install a dead air muzzle brake onto your rifle using timing shims. This way you can mount any of the dead air Sandman line of suppressors to your barrel. You can purchase these through our website at eSilencers.com. So, let's get started. For this project, you're gonna need a workbench, a vise, a vise block for your upper receiver, and you're gonna need an AR armorer's tool along with your shim set and your muzzle brake. And before we get started with that, we wanna safety check our weapon and make sure that it is completely clear. You can see there's no magazine in the chamber. When I pull the bolt back, it is completely empty. And so now we'll disassemble the upper from the lower. Moving the bolt and the charging handle. And we're gonna remove our optic. And now we can head over to the workbench with our vise and get this thing clamped down. So now we're going to take our upper receiver block and we're going to put our upper receiver in there. Mount this in the vise. Make sure that it's in there. Pretty secure. And now what I like to do with the muzzle brake and timing shims is I like to go ahead and take and put this muzzle brake, try not to cross thread that at all, all the way on until it stops and see about where it is timed and as you can see the ports on top are not at the 12 o'clock position so I'm going to back this thing off until it's at the 12 o'clock position and then I'm going to take my timing shims and I'm going to put them in there and see about where that's at. And that looks like it's perfect, which is very, very unusual. A lot of times you'll have to pull two or three shims out or add a very small shim. So we'll pull this off. And while we pull this off, I think it's important to explain why we want to use a universal system like this dead air muzzle brake. The reason it's important is because you can use this on many different rifles, many different setups, and you can use the same can on many different setups, and it's a quick attach mount that you can use with one hand. And with the chemo system, it kind of makes it universal for other cans as well. I'll go ahead and get that started on there. Some people ask the question, why is it that you would use timing shims instead of a crush washer? Don't we use crush washers for other types of flash hiders and muzzle brakes that we don't mount suppressors to? And the answer to that is yes. And the difference between the timing shims and a crush washer, and you can see a crush washer here, is that a crush washer will crush unevenly. And when that crush washer crushes unevenly, it can actually cause the muzzle brake to be at a cant one direction or to an angle at one direction, which on the end of your suppressor, will actually have your suppressor canted, and that can actually cause baffle strikes where the timing shims uh, go in there flush, they go in there straight, and when you tighten them down, they crush evenly all the way through, and that keeps you from having baffle strikes. So now that we've got that on there, we're gonna go ahead and give it a good snug hand tighten with that, and then we'll take our AR armorer's tool, and we are going to put this on here. Make sure our vise is tightened down. And we are going to tighten this up until that's in the 12 o'clock position. And it looks like we're right at 12 o'clock with those. I also want to mention that when doing this, one of the things that you want to do too is possibly put some Loctite or some rock set on the threads. That way your muzzle brake doesn't ever back off. And that will do it. Now you can see how to use timing shims and a muzzle brake. One thing to point out too, this one went on pretty smooth, but sometimes when you get it on there, you may have to pull one of your shims off and add a thinner shim that comes with your shim, shim set. This key mod brake made by Dead Air Silencers is a really unique brake. It's a three chamber brake. It has three ports on the side. And one really neat feature about this is that there are some angled ports that come out the side. And what this actually does is this is for 
disturbance of the gas that comes out the side. The gas is gonna come this direction. And when you shoot at a range or you shoot with your buddies and you can't use a suppressor, what happens is that gas can be very volatile and very concussive with people around you. And these little ports on the side actually help to vent gas forward at an angle to disrupt that gas so that the concussive nature of a muzzle brake isn't what it could be. And that's a pretty slick uh, feature there, the dead air brake. Also, this three chamber brake helps keep it nice and flat. The three ports on top really help keep this thing nice and flat when you shoot. And uh, it's a great brake to use with a suppressor or without a suppressor. Another neat feature of the Dead Air line of suppressors is that you can buy these key mod brakes and flash hiders not only for a 7.62x51, uh, you can also get them for the 556x45. Uh, they come in the half by 28 threads and what you're able to do with that is you're able to mount your 30 caliber suppressor onto your 556 guns and then back to the 300 blackout or 308 all the way up to 300 wind mag when you use the Dead Air Sandman line of suppressors. All right, now that we have our muzzle brake attached to our barrel and our upper receiver has been reassembled, we're going to go ahead and attach this to our lower receiver and our pitch pins. And one of the cool features about the Dead Air uh, Sandman line of suppressors is that they are all quick attach and detach and the way that that takes place on here is on the suppressor itself there is a little dimple on the end of the collar that lines up with the three ports on the front end and then once that's lined up give it a quick turn and it is ready to go and many of you may have a few questions about what particular AR-15 pistol this is. Uh, this is actually a Bullsix Advantage 6 inch barrel with an SLR Rifle Works rail and a Thorsen Customs buffer tube cover with a CC or CAA saddle. And so there you go. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this has helped anyone wanting to add a muzzle brake device using tiny shims. Remember to like, subscribe, and check us out on the web at eSilencers.com, your top source for silencers online.